Years ago, technology revolutionized the way humans interact with one another. Today, it's changing the way we work. Kara Swisher, co-founder and editor-at-large at Recode, has covered the ins and outs of the tech industry ever since the early days of the internet. From reporting at the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal to building her own media group, Swisher played a real part in shaping the culture of Silicon Valley as it developed the interconnected world we know today. On this episode of Influencers, she joins me to examine the role of America's largest tech companies and how they've contributed to the development of our new work from home society. Influencers with Andy Serwer is brought to you by Verizon. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Serwer, and welcome to Influencers, and welcome to our guest, Kara Swisher, co-founder of Recode, now owned by Vox, contributor to NBC, and also an editorial writer at okay. the New York Times. Contributing. Yes. Columnist. Contri I shouldn't say whatever. editorial writer. Yes. Column they got all kinds of different Whatever. Roles. No one cares. Okay. We okay. care. You care. All right. Um, how's it going, Kara? Good. I'm sorry I was texting, but I was texting to Katie Couric about something you said that was funny. Oh, okay. Well, all that's right. salient, right? <laughs> salient, yes. Um, so, wow, the times in which we find ourselves, yes, right? Yes, indeed. Um, it's I can't believe you dragged me here today to have me killed. <laughs> You're not going to die. None of us are going to die. Although you said people will die. They and will. In all seriousness, yeah. that's the whole, we have no idea how bad this is going to get. It's going to yes. get worse. Yeah, life is analog. Sorry. You yeah. know, for all the digital things I cover and you talk about, life is analog. And this is a virus that is analog and it's spreading in an analog fashion and, you know, affects us all. Your and brother's a doctor. You talked to him Indeed. about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess, does this relate to technology, Silicon well, Valley? Yeah, Sure, a there's lot, a lot of solutions. Right? There's a lot of things that we're utilizing. The last time we had a, something even approximating this was SARS, and it wasn't as serious a problem as, as this has become, a uh, global phenomenon, and global crisis. Um, and we didn't have, if you, the last time this happened, it, we didn't have apps, we didn't have uh, phones the way we do, the smartphones. We didn't have Facebook, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have on and on and on. And so uh, it's a really different, people are coping, at least from a work point of view and a school point of view, a little better, uh, given that everybody has to socially distance themselves. And they can come together socially on social media, for example. Um, and in fact, it's working pretty well in a good way, finally, I think. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of facets there because you talk about social media, commuting, and then there's community, telecommuting, right? And telemedicine, then conferences, conferences. There's yeah. bad behavior by people in Silicon Valley, as usual, which is like, hey, it's a virus, just like a viral thing, and then yeah. people get shot down on Twitter. Yeah, there's Twitter, yeah. of course, as always yeah. to talk about. Yeah. But it can be used as a good thing that these right. technologies didn't exist the last time we had a, a, a the crisis like this, a pandemic crisis, and uh, they've helped. They've they've helped a bad situation. Obviously, AI is going to be used to figure out where patterns are in this. Um, if we do enough testing across the world, they're doing testing and analysis. And so there's a lot of good things about technology in this. Um, and I think technology companies, by and large, have reacted pretty well to how to deal with their workers at home. Um, they're, they're at least stepping up to the gig workers, in some cases, um, how to take care of them. And we're all st starting to realize how vulnerable our society has become from an employment point of view. Um, and then informationally, they're trying really hard to keep out the bad information and try to stop the bad actors, uh, such as Amazon cutting off price gougers of things like Purell and other things, and uh, Facebook and Twitter trying to take off bad information about, uh, about how to get a, a cure for coronavirus. I mean, that gig economy point that you made, mm -hmm. I think, is a really important one because at these big companies, I think people might be surprised to, to learn how many Most people are contractors. Are, they're contractors, right? Yes, yes, quite a lot. I think at Google, I think it's 150,000. It's some number that's really larger than you thought. It's not 150,000, but it's a large amount of the of people that work at these companies are contractors. And then you have companies like Uber and, uh, you know, Grubhub, all these things, and Amazon, you know, delivery. It's all contract workers. And right. so these people are without protections, without health protections, without job protections, and really have to go to work. And at the same time, there's going to be a big push for delivery at home with most people staying home, hopefully. Um, and so it's kind of an interesting situation of how to protect those workers. But you raise another point there, which is to say, in this society, you're going to need these Uber drivers yep. and Grubhub people, and those people 
they have to work because it's their livelihood and they can't they afford to take a walk. Well, yeah, walk, unless they're right? sick and then there right. should be paid sick leave for them. Right. And so it really does begin once this is over, which at some point it will be, uh, we have to start thinking hard about what kind of society we have created and what protections we need to put in place to, pr uh, to protect all, con all people who, who work uh, and, and, and have, the better, have a better life for them. So it's made us think about it in a really dramatic fashion. No, I mean, it's sort of, I mean, this has always been the problem with these gig economy workers. They're kind of having it both ways. So in other words, right now I'm hearing that, I think it was Uber or Lyft, one of them was going to be offering protections to some of their drivers yeah. who are getting sick, but then that sounds like an employee, right. so then the government may come after them. Well, they already have. You yeah. know, there's there's things like in California with AB5, yeah. and it, you know, this is a game these companies are playing. Right. They are employees, yes. and they need to pay up, and that's just the way it is. And I think the question is, do we, you know, uh, many years ago, Gavin Newsom and I, who's now the governor of uh, California, talked about this new designation of worker. We have to change the, what a worker is and how we protect them, and, you know, it brings into very sharp relief how much, how important health care is and the delivery of health care. Um, you know, you could see in the future a lot of these tech companies getting into healthcare. I mean, why couldn't Amazon do testing for this virus? You know, probably would do a better job than the Trump administration, although that's a very low bar. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, you could see, you know, you'll see Apple get into healthcare, Amazon get into healthcare, maybe Google get into healthcare. Yeah, I mean, as far as Amazon goes, excuse me, a lot of people were saying they'd be the perfect company to deliver 100%. masks and everything else. One, but and would, they do it right. The, would the government, would POTUS call Jeff Bezos up, you think? Well, that's the issue. I mean, of course, but you know, it, as soon as we get rid of this clown, the better, because he's just bringing his personal gripes into a, a, what, what really requires people to do just a really good job at governing. And so that's what's, that's another thing that you've seen in this crisis is that who is good at executing? And that's really going to be critical in this crisis and also in general in life. Um, and you see the governors of all these states stepping up and doing an excellent job, both Republican and Democrat, like Mike DeWine of, uh, and Larry Hogan, who are Republicans, Maryland and Ohio, and uh, uh, Jared Polis in Colorado, Gavin Newsom in California, uh, Governor Prisker in, in Illinois, um, and, uh, and, and many, many others. Let's talk about Google and this uh, website that they supposedly have or don't, they don't have. have. What, so, they do what now. do you know about that? I'll tell you what I know. Okay. The, what Trump announced was false, was a falsehood. Um, what it was was an idea, and I think someone just said it to him and he just repeated it. That seems to be what he's done several times in this thing. He says something, doesn't retain it properly, and then repeats something that he just makes up. And so I, I'm going to give him the, the best benefit of out here is an exaggeration. I think it was a lie, but exaggerate. he exaggerated a discussion that was going on between uh, the White House and tech companies, which took place last week. And one of the ideas is this, this website. It makes sense. You would have a website, a matching website, where you could find out where you could get tested, if we can get tested, by the way. That part hasn't been fixed yet either. Um, but where you can get tested, your symptoms, and this and that. And so Google had been a, a division, not of Google, of Alphabet. Alphabet owns Google. Yeah. Um, is another division at Alphabet is called Verily, and it's life sciences essentially. Um, and and it was working on a website for California, probably with the Newsom administration there. And um, and it was going to do a very small test case in the Bay Area, and it was not ready. And so he conflated that with the fact that 1,700 Google engineers had agreed to volunteer for whatever efforts Google was making in this area. And so th Google does that periodically during all the, hur the hurricanes, all kinds of things. I remember they moved very quickly. Same thing at Twitter when um, the, uh, Haiti was having was was uh, was under a hurricane watch. And so. He, he conflated 1,700 workers working on a website that will be up very soon, not like websites of past. And I'm like, what is a website of a past? Well, There's you know no, what that was. <laughs> what? Oh, he was My referring space. to Obamacare. Oh, that. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, whatever. Little, He's just an. Yeah. It's just idiotic. Of course, right. listen. That was a debacle. Let's be yeah. clear. But this is a right. crisis. Right. Um, yeah. And so, I, you know, I think Google did a very nice thing by saying, or or maybe they're trying to curry favor by saying, oh, it's, oh, it's, we're going to do it. And they weren't going to do it. But their first reaction was essentially uh, WTF. Like, essentially, right. that's what they, they, they that was yeah. their first, like, we're not making that. And then their second was like, we're making one with the federal government. Well, it reminds me a little bit of when Microsoft found out mm -hmm. they won the Jedi contract. Oh. <laughs> they didn't even have a press release yeah, made. They were like, they oh, uh, we yeah. won? They well, were shocked. Well, that one's now in court, right. obviously, yeah. because, yeah. again, it looks like the president put his thumb on the scale for that one. What um, is the we'll see. That's going forward. Right. What is the mood like in Silicon Valley? I mean, a lot of people accuse that part of the world of being la-la land. Mm -hmm. and 
in you know in their own bubble. Do right. they take this seriously now? You think? You know, I think it's interesting because for such a digital culture, it's very analog. You mm. know, the buses, they their their campuses, they they've got food and dry cleaning and haircuts. They live on those those campuses in a lot of ways, and you, more than any other offices, the offices of Google or Facebook or. Twitter, they're they're very populated because it's very mm. comfortable to work there, and because they provide everything. You know, um, it's uh, assisted. I call it assisted living for millennials. Um, you know, any kind of thing they could have, they have, and so they're very used to going in and, and interacting together. And uh, you know, engineering is even though it seems like a solo craft, it isn't. It's a group act. It's a team activity, um, and so they are used to gathering. And mm. so now they're not, now they're very good at not gathering too because they can do remote work, they can use all these tools like Slack or Zoom or Hangouts, uh, Hangouts whatever, mm. Teams for Microsoft. Yeah. There's all kinds of tools now to work remotely and they certainly can work remotely. And I think the tech companies have moved really quickly to, uh, to doing that, to quicker than other companies I think probably, and probably easier because they have a population used to it. It's interesting though, I didn't consider the cultural thing like Who's going to wash my dog? Right. Because <laughs> I'm just so used Who's to. Who's going to wash right? my dog? I'm just so used to bringing it in, right? Yeah, right. That's, oh, that's, some of those campuses are kind of yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And so, as a tech. Where am I going to get my Tibetan food this right, week? Right. You know? They do. They have Tibetan food or whatever. The as a tech columnist, mm -hmm. how do you figure out what to write? Generally, but right now especially. <sighs> well, you can't write anything without typing coronavirus right now. I yeah. think it's really hard to, to, I mean, we can talk about antitrust issues right now, but no one's, there's not going to be any legislation, there's not going to be anything having to do with it, uh, investigating at the Justice Department, which was taking place. Like just last week, there were, there were hearings where Yelp was involved and all, all kinds of others about antitrust issues. There's been ongoing investigations at the FTC around the size of tech companies. Um, so it was ongoing, it's just stopped right now like everything else in the country. So you really can't, I've written about that quite a bit, but it's really hard to write about anything but this right now, because there isn't anything. I mean, you think you'll have to find, well, here's a new company, maybe working on a vaccine. I did, yeah, I that, actually right? started writing yeah. about, initially, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, I wrote yeah. about, like, we're going to need to focus on Zoom and some others, like some other companies that are tele telecommuting, because telecommuting didn't really take off as much as people thought it would. Now, it, of course, it is. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, 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 this week I'm going to write about Twitter being good, finally. It's mm. actually useful. It's not right. the cesspool that it typically is, that it can be useful in a crisis, that you feel a sense of belonging on, on a site like that and yeah. have, have a community and so you feel connection. I was going to, I'm sorry to say, I'm mm -hmm. sorry to say I was going to ask you some questions about that because I know you don't want to tip your column too much. Sure, but okay. I mean, in other words, gosh, there's so much going on there with, you know, um, Activist management. Oh yeah, Sil sure. You know, Silver We've Lake. talked about this a lot on right. Pivot. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. You know, then of course there's POTUS. Right. And you know it's just it's kind of a weird. And then Jack's trippy well, mind. Well, he's he's he lives to fight another day. I mean, I think Silver Lake came in and saved him from what was. Uh, we'll see. You know, I don't know Elliott Management, which is uh, tried to do what was correct as a shareholder, which was this is a highly undervalued asset. And boy, this week has shown that. Like, I bet the numbers are up enormously right. this week. Um, this is an undervalued asset that has been under uh, under revenue, under under the stock price. It mm -hmm. hasn't risen. Facebook has gone up, whatever, umpteenth times. And right. Twitter has stayed at 10% since he got there. And so I think they had a very good point about that. Also a good point about Jack Dorsey, who is the founder, the creator of Twitter. Um, not being there full time, he has another job at Square, which is another public company. Um, worried about that, and then he had said he was going to Africa to live for part of the year, which was another like what? Like no CEO could have done that, said yeah. that all that stuff, and so there was concern about that, and so they were putting pressure on him. And then uh, Silverlake came in with a billion dollars to invest in the company and uh, got a board seat, and so we'll see if there's some significant changes. At least it's good to have different voices on a board, unlike. Facebook, where you saw Ken Chenault leave this uh, this week, last week, and they're putting on people who look like rubber stamps for Zuckerberg, although he doesn't need a rubber stamp because he is the ultimate stamp. He has no, that board is just without any power whatsoever. But isn't that a problem across the board, Kara? Facebook, Google, Twitter, that well, not Twitter. founders, not Twitter, because not Twitter he because have he a does it's state. common shares, but right. at Facebook, 100%. And Google as well. The board is, it's like a banana republic over right. there. Mark Zuckerberg runs everything, right? right. So, but what Ken Chenault was on there, and I think the reason he left is he felt he could have some influence, even if he didn't have voting influence, really. Um, but he didn't. He couldn't. He was obviously frustrated, and you know he let it be known. You know, sources close to Ken Chenault said 
Um, obviously was dissatisfied with the way the political stuff was going, the decisions were being made, probably the influence of Peter Thiel on Mark, I would guess, um, because Facebook went with letting politicians lie. Now that's not going to look so good coming out of this, I'll tell you that. Yeah. So he may, they may have to adjust that particular um, attitude that they have towards that. Now Twitter went full, we're not going to have lying right. political ads, but that's because they can't handle them. I mean, mostly it's like, ugh. No, like let's put it in a drawer and close the door and it go away. And that's a good decision for them because they were not handling it. And Google took the middle ground, which I thought was the best one, which is we're going to watch micro, man micro targeting. We're going to not let people lie. We're going to watch them very closely. That to me was the most responsible of the, of the big platforms. And still they've got issues on YouTube and other places, but they're at least trying to be responsible. Well, let's talk about Facebook a little bit, mm -hmm. Kara, because people like yourself, and I've written negative things, and mm -hmm. God knows Roger McNamee's out there. Yeah. Um, and yet. The stock remains. Right, and the advertisers remain as well, right? Of course, right? there's nowhere else to go. Right, so what's going to. And after this, a lot of companies are going to have business after this. They're going to be left standing, the big powerful companies who can wait it out with the money, and the Facebook being one of them. Yeah, I mean, so is it impregnable, therefore? No, nothing's impregnable. Right. Look at, you know, a, where, what are we, in the AOL building? Right. I think it, yeah, it was. Like yeah. Uh, remember them? Yeah. They were great. Yeah. And I know they're still here, but they're not. Right. Like, it, they of had, course. like, they were the dominant force. And I think, you know, technology companies, the young eats, they're old, and eventually Facebook will not have the kind of power it has. But it is holding on to power because it's the only social media company of any size, really. I mean, there is Twitter and there is Snapchat. But if you think about in three areas, in commerce, search, and social media, when's the last time there was a new social media site started? It's 2011. 2011, it's nearly a decade ago, Snapchat. So search business? Which they tried to buy desperately. They did, and then now right. try to steal from and yeah. ruin. So right. that's nice. Yeah. And then there's, um, to me, that's the case for against faith. That's the one the government should pursue, what happened to Snapchat. Um, they're the Netscape of this mm. relationship with vis-a-vis -vis Microsoft. And then there's search. There's been no search companies, period. None. Right. Commerce, there's been no big commerce companies, and Walmart is sucking wind compared to Amazon online, at least. And so there's no competition. There's no competition, and that's really a problem. And eventually the government is going to have to, especially if these companies come back stronger than ever from this coronavirus crisis, which they will, um, because other companies will just be culled completely. The herd will be culled, and, and then what? And you know they're going to need a new definition of antitrust, though, because yeah, they're you know, working that, on whole, that. that whole thing that it was only consumer harm, and you can't show that with lower and lower prices from Amazon. You have to show There's harm different to the kinds competitors. of consumers harm. Right. There's different kind of yeah. consumer harm. The right. lack of innovation is consumer yes. harm. Right. And I think that's really lack the issue. Lack of choice. And some of, some of the stuff the FTC is doing, including looking at the purchase of small companies, I think is critical in terms of how they, there's ways to take out talent, there's ways to take out competitors, it's called killer acquisition, that you kill whatever might be a, a, a risk to you. Um, and so I think looking at the smaller ones instead of the larger ones will, will mm. yield a great deal of insight into what's happening, which is what they're doing, they're buying up the competition. You've spent a lot of time, Kara, in both Washington, D.C. and Silicon Valley. I mean, you're yeah, one of the few people who yeah. I think goes both ways. I there. do. Well, I saw this coming. I saw this coming because I had covered uh, the what Microsoft. Do you mean by that? Well, I saw I covered the Microsoft yeah, trial back right. in, at the Washington Post. So yeah. you could see these companies creating, like you know, you have Amazon. It owns the marketplace and it sells goods, and it has the distribute. What? Like, huh? What right. Does that and the you distribution. Yeah, yeah, that reminds me of the railroads. Yeah. Owning the, the the tracks, the tickets, the everything, the routes, yeah. everything. You know, you have uh, Google, which I happen to like the the C the the, the Alphabet uh, CEO Sundar Pichai, mm -hmm. Pichai, but um, but it's not Pichai, Pichai. Sundar Pichai. It's Pichai. Yeah. Um, you know, they own all of search, and then right. they make products that compete with the Yelps and everything else. Like, what's that? Um, and then you have uh, you know over at Facebook, the only social media company of any size. No one, there's no VC that's investing in social media. They will say it to you outright. Right, I mean, so. you couldn't. But, so, these two places Three. on the map, well, I'm just saying the Silicon right. Valley versus Washington is what I meant. They don't get each other? I mean, what? what? They need to get each other this mm -hmm. week, certainly. Mm -hmm. There needs yeah. to be cooperation between the federal and state and local governments and these big companies, um, which are operating as quasi-countries of their own, right? right? Or right. The powers of yes. their own. Um, Denmark has an ambassador. Uh, really? Oh, that's to, right. To Silicon, Silicon Valley. Valley yeah. you. Um, so, you know, they have to get along on some levels and at the same, and, and in other, you know, especially around defense, around security, around cybersecurity. Right. But at the same time, there have to be 
laws in place on these internet companies, of which there aren't any. Just keep that in mind. Yep. The banks have law. You've covered banking. Uh, Bank, didn't you cover banking for sure. a long time? Yeah. Banking, you've got laws uh, well, Walmart for chemical companies. Walmart has more laws that Walmart, govern it versus Amazon. All of them do. Right. The, only the only industry that does not have any regulation is the internet industry. Right. None. Yeah. In fact, the, the regulation that does exist advantages them, which is Section 230 yes. uh, of the uh, Communications Decency Act. It is an advant it's an advantage to them to have that law in place. Right, because they're not media companies. They're platforms whatever. and they're not liable to say um, um, whatever. They're not, they're not all whatever. kinds of litigation. Whatever. That's what right. it was meant at, as a good yeah. reason when it was started, and now right. it doesn't work for us. Right. Um, but, it depend but taking it away is also not an answer. And so it's really complicated, and I think Again, once our legislators have time to think yeah. about things, they could perhaps focus on this. But some of the problems with that um, are the fact that, say, Ted Cruz thinks they're stifling conservative voices, whereas yeah. David Cicilline thinks they're um, meddling, they're allowing Russians to meddle in elections. Yeah. Maybe they both have a point, but uh, they David definitely Cicilline, don't agree. David Cicilline is correct. The right. Russians well, did meddle in elections. <laughs> that is true. Every intelligence right. agency has said that. This is ridiculous that we're even right. arguing about this. Of yes. course the Russians meddled. Right. Um, and the Russians were customers of these of yes. these platforms. Not, they didn't hack. They do hack, and right. they did hack, right. but they were also customers. Right. And so that's one thing. The second thing, this conservative voices thing, and I've, I just recently talked to another group that was insisting that this was the case. And, yeah. You know, at some some days I think, well, maybe they violate these rules more, and that's yeah. why they're getting flagged more. And, and 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 at the same time, they should be able to say what they want, and they've got got they've gotten broad um, advantage on these platforms, actually conservative voices. And so when yeah. when Ted Cruz says things like that, it's just it's nonsense. It's really just nonsense. They he. If well, that's he's trying the case, to keep pushing the envelope so well, you is, wouldn't dare stifle a conservative you know, voice, right? Right, exactly. But the issue is, when do these people ever shut up? Never online, right? <laughs> right. They let Alex Jones stay on those platforms yeah. long after right. he buy, and he's still on there selling coronavirus right. like, toothpaste or something yeah. like that. What? Yeah. A, this guy should be jailed, like at this point, because right. of the damage he's causing the populace. But um, but you know they let him stay there, so if they're tolerant, way too tolerant of a lot of stuff that goes on. Is there someone in Washington like Senator Warner who yes, could Senator, kind of get a middle ground? There's a million senators. You know, there's this sort of idea that people in Washington don't understand that that's not true. The yeah. FTC chair people, all on both sides, there's Republicans and Democrats at the FTC commissioners. I find them all incredibly intelligent about this, and they really and the, and the staff certainly does understand it. Uh, a lot of people at the Justice Department really do understand what needs to be done. It's just a long, arduous process. And then um, and then in Congress, there's plenty of people. There's, you know, Susan Del Benny from Washington. There's uh, Mark Warner. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy Klobuchar has right. got some amazing bills yeah. in place. Um, uh, Senator Wyden, uh, Senator Cantwell, Senator... Yeah. Um, there's a whole, there's, but right. I can, there's, uh, Senator Bennett is particularly good on this stuff. Um, there's plenty of people who know what to do and, and are, are very well versed and aren't in the thraw of the uh, tech companies as some are. Right. Just a question about Twitter. So you're on there a lot. So is POTUS. Do you ever respond to that? I mean. On there a lot. What do you mean? You're on Twitter a lot. Yes, I am. And so is President Trump. Yes. Do you respond to President Trump on Twitter? I mean, he doesn't talk to me. I don't. I don't well, I mean, but you know, do you like retweet and say this is nonsense or you know, Oh, like, constantly. Yeah. yeah, I'm allowed to do that because yeah. I have a person. I'm a personality. So. Right. Yeah, well, I left that that like fair and balanced world it, long ago. It's funny though because people said he's just so clueless about technology, and yet he has mastered that particular He's fantastic. Platform. I wrote a great column about mm -hmm. how good, I've written mm -hmm. several columns about how good he is at it. Um, is you know, it really him, do you think? It, is it yes, actually oh, him? Oh, no, no, no. He is a, it's, it, he, to, as FDR is to radio and mm -hmm. JFK is to TV, he is to Twitter. He's That's really perfect. good at it. I like that. And mm -hmm. so he's, you know, he's, the, he's an epic troll, and he's, uh, you know, just a, appalling behavior on, on Twitter, mm -hmm. and breaks the rules almost continually that I can tell. But he's allowed to because he's a newsworthy figure. Um, I do think it's dangerous. It's a dangerous tool in his hands. I think he's used it badly. I think this whole crisis has is, is sort of been a backlash yeah. to that. I think he's done it. It's fascinating how badly he's handled Twitter during this crisis because he's put a lot of, when it comes down to people's lives, I think people don't like right. falsehoods. You know, he, the, the political attacks are one thing, but this, this is people's lives and when he's lying about yeah actual science it's a problem um, but he's very good at it you know another person who is very good is AOC you know mm -hmm. pick it pick someone who's quite good at Twitter she's she's fantastic she's different than him when he's sort of a broadcaster he just scream it's like someone screaming with a bullhorn right. at you and then you have to hear him because they're screaming 
she is she's a more call and response kind of person and she speaks internet you know she speaks Twitter like she's a native right. speaker yeah, of yeah, it yeah, yeah. and so uh, I think more and more politicians you know they're all on it and the press is all on it and so there's a lot of discussion going on and then there's all these people who just popped up and are really good like George Conway mm. uh, who mm -hmm. I would have agreed nothing on but I really enjoy him on Twitter right. you know we I can't wait I was saying to him I saw him recently I said I can't wait till we go back to not liking each other again <laughs> <laughs> on regular yeah. topics on yeah. good on on policy issues so um, but it's an interesting place where certain people have done incredibly well let's talk a little bit about your career I mean you sure. started at these legacy media companies yeah and then you became an entrepreneur entrepreneur report entrepreneur report entrepreneur and you still have Don't your foot that in way. that then then you're also working at this legacy media yeah. organization that according to a colleague of yours is now almost monopolistic again okay. right sure okay mm. sure um, so so what is your career arc I mean did you plan it it yes, I plan the whole thing. I know. Every, when well, we, we were in school, school together. together. Right, exactly. No, I, I think I've been entrepreneurial my whole career. Mm -hmm. And I think I once I started covering the Internet as a young reporter, it, yeah. at, the, at, at first at the Washington Post, when I covered AOL, right. I think I started to see that this was a shift very much like uh, radio was and television was. You know, I think I saw that shift much earlier than other people and then was responding to it. And so I'm very hyper aware of the shifts in it and I know before they're coming than most people. And so I pay a lot of attention to the impact on media, which I've always been aware of. And so that's how I moved into podcasting. I thought, well now, you know, I did that five, six years ago. That was, now it's the thing, right? And I've got two very big podcasts, make a lot of money. And the reason I did it is because I saw the mobile devices getting so prevalent, the software, being the app software being terrific and then the fact that people had them these great airpods and things mm. like that in their ears and were really utilizing books and I thought podcasts make sense and so I started doing that is that what you like the most of your, I mean you've I got do. different now things you've got your column you've got yeah. going on TV you're yeah. writing still yeah what podcast the thing yeah, right now, but I'm, I have other things that I'm interested in. Yeah, I think podcasts are amazing. I think they're really fun, and you have real fan base. It's a really interesting uh, business because it, we make a lot of money at it. We happen to. Not everybody does, but we do. We have very high CPMs, which are cost per thousand. Um, and, and it's very low cost to make them. We have a very lean staff making them. And, and people love fans. The fans are crazy. I think the fans I have from the podcast, both Rico Decode and Pivot, are crazy fans they love you and they talk to you and they want not this this week I'm not gonna do selfies but it's a really interesting dynamic you have the relationship you have and you can also do really we, we really bet heavily on substantive conversations and so yeah. you know there's a lot of I felt there was a lot of twitchiness going on in regular media and so I thought I can talk an hour like I do at the code conference except I could I can do hundreds of people versus 16 top executives you can meet people like Shoshana Zuboff. We had her on early. Yeah. She was just surveillance capitalism. Yeah. We, I think we were among the first people that had her on. Or Stacey Abrams. I remember hearing about her mm -hmm. early, early on when she was working in, in Georgia as, the, as, the, uh, as one of the top uh, legislators there. And I had her on early, early before I ever heard about it. So you could really find, you know, or Kirsten Green, who runs Forerunner, which does all this VC investment. Or you can go to big names like Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg. We did a very famous podcast where he messed up quite substantively. Right. Um, but it's a conversation, and so it gives people a chance either to show their tr true colors or really show colors that aren't so attractive. Right, right. You know, I refer to that Ben Smith column. Yeah. And I think it is an interesting point he made that everyone thought that the internet was going to diffuse media and yeah. it did in a way, and now it is becoming re-aggregated perhaps. Do you, what are your thoughts on I that, Karen? I don't Kara? know, we'll see. I just, you know, I think all media companies are, you know, one payment away from going bankrupt. So, yeah. you know, I mean, look at this. What's gonna happen now to all media companies, not just the New York Times, I think they're in a strong position. But nonetheless, this is gonna be a real hit to all kinds of media companies and will call media companies. And certainly the strongest will survive. And I, by the way, the New York Times and the Washington Post have been doing amazing work on coronavirus. I have to right. say, it's go-to stuff. Um, it's it's gonna be difficult no matter where you are in the food chain and in, in the media business, largely because Facebook and Google control all digital advertising. Control and right. dominate, and they're monopolies on that. I mean, duopolies. does that mean that the golden age of digital media is over? No. I mean, no. but the, you know, you had that crop, like the... Sure, the BuzzFeed, right. the Vice, Fox. You know, and, no, you know. because they're, I think it's just hard to do media now. It's the golden age of media is over. And mm. so, uh, you know, it used to be the Washington Post used to print money, right? Doing classifieds and display, yeah. app, remember? But the problem there was not 
digital. It was Walmart coming in, and then Heckinger and and uh, and Woody's closing. That yeah. wasn't. That's what killed. That's what hurt the and Washington Post. Craigslist. Post. Craigslist. Yes. Yeah. Next. Right. First was Walmart. First was Woody's he, going. He, Woody's Woodward and Lothrop. Woodward and Lothrop. Uh, oh, yes, we remember. Going uh, Garfinkel's, Woody's, mm -hmm. Heckinger, uh, mm -hmm. all kinds of local mm -hmm. retailers who used to do display advertising didn't win Walmart and Walmart didn't advertise and then classified got right. hit by Craigslist right, right, and right, then right. subscribers yeah. got hit by the internet now that people do now like to subscribe and the, and the Washington Post is doing a thriving business in subscription but it's got a limit to its ability it's never going to go back to what it was right what is the model or models that you think will work going forward trying different things we've yeah. shifted a number of times like so early on I realized that digital business was over a long time ago because I understood that Facebook and Google were going to dominate. You just ads, for instance. Absolutely. There's yeah. no winning. There's a race to the bottom. It's yeah. a race to the bottom, and there's no way I could get a great enough people. No matter how good you are, you cannot beat them. You, you can't. discover that with Recode, like after yeah, a while? Before when before that. Wait, uh -huh. Yeah, before when I was at the Wall Street Journal yeah. with All oh, Things D. D. It was yeah. just impossible. So we made an enormous amount of money on events, yeah. right? And then everybody tried that. Yep. You know, we're still in business, which is great, although it's been hit by coronavirus. Right. Um, but we we moved into events, which was very lucrative, like yep. enormously lucrative. Um, and then podcasts, right. you know, just keep, keep trying different things. And so I think if you're in the media space, you have to try like 10 different things and then try to uh, get costs in line with that. And it doesn't, it means there's gonna be a lot of small companies is really what it is, but large uh, behemoth media companies are very hard. Yeah. Again, as you've seen here, this would, they tried to do it at Yahoo if you, they tried very hard. They're trying. Trying. Keep going. <laughs> Keep at it, Andrew. <laughs> hey, so um, last question, where's Tim? Where's Tim Armstrong? What happened to him? Yeah, he left the Where'd building. Where'd he go? He left the building. Where's He's got a new thing. All these He's geniuses doing, yeah. with their ideas. I remember having to listen to all of them. It's like, hard. Yeah, whatever. Um, so they did okay. Yes, there's that whole point as well. Yes, yeah. What do, what do you want people to think about you? Or I don't even want to say remember because we're too young, even though we're right. one of Are us is going to. Yeah, something six I don't oh. know. What? No. Six oh well, yes, we're gonna get old. Right. Yes, we're yeah. thinking nothing. I'm gonna keep going, Andrew. I right. don't know what you're doing. So fun, 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 death. Fun, 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 death. How do right. you how do you remember that? I know that. You I, know. That was the one I was gonna put on my tombstone. But the right. punctuation is critically important. It's fun exclamation point, yeah. fun exclamation point, fun exclamation point, death period. Yeah. Got That's it. That's right. Got I, it. Uh, punctuation is always critically important in my life. No, I want I want to keep doing things. I'm gonna change. I, I'll, I'll do things that will surprise people. And shift, and I think that's critical if you're going to be a journalist. You have to remain forever curious, uh, y including about your own business models and stuff like that. Most journalists aren't; they are now, but they right. weren't for a long time. Yeah, no, that's true. All right, Kara Swisher, co-founder of Recode, New York Times, things, NBC. Everything. I'm multi. All I'm, things I'm a poly a polymath. What do they call it? Polymath? You are. You're a polymath. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for joining us. All right. Us. Thanks a lot. You've been watching Influencers. I'm Andy Serwer. We'll see you next time.